Our next candidate is the Litus Anamorphix 1.33X, and that is a massive piece of glass in a housing that is built like a tank. It is short with only 8 cm, but it weighs a hefty 1.27 kilos. So, lens support is an absolute must when using the Litus, which is why it has the option to attach one directly. It has a built-in clamp to adapt 140mm cine lenses, but of course you can just use any lens with a 140mm donut ring. Using a cine lens is a very good idea with the Litus, as the lens support at the adapter will not allow a lens to extend during focus or zoom unless you build a sliding system of sorts. The Litus holds what the SLR promises. Sharp images and wide angles accepting lenses as wide as 28mm on 3 x 2 full frame, making it the record holder of adapters. The Litus wouldn't fit inside a normal matte box and it comes with its own matte box that attaches directly to the adapter. It has geared focus with markings and a longer throw. Don't get your hopes up, dual focus racking is still unpractically complex. While the Litus can go super wide, we opted to stay in the same ballpark as the other lenses in the test, using an 80mm Mamiya Seiko C f1.9, a medium format lens that we coined the Dark Knight, as it is rumored to have been used in the film of the same name. In combination with a 0.7 focal reducer, the lens is an effective 55mm f1.3. The 1.33x stretch factor with a medium format lens makes this the closest you can get to a Super Panavision 70 look using full frame. If you have been on this channel for a while, the Litus was also used for a gun video in our lighting episode. Just like the SLR, the Litus is a dual focus system and you're stuck at that as you will not be able to get a vario adopter large enough. You will not achieve perfect focus in the whole range unless you do dual focus racking. As the Litus is way more forgiving than a 2x system, it will allow you to get reasonable sharpness if the adapter is set in the right ballpark. 200% magnification shows a nice cinematic softness, but little anamorphic characteristics. Wrecking focus shows that there's no oval bokeh, like is to be expected with a 1.33 stretch. This setup also shows the problem with the extended Mamiya lens. Our sliding lens support didn't slide well enough, so you can easily see me fiddling with the lens during focus wrecking. If your subject or camera is not moving and you hit dual focus perfectly, the Litus is very sharp while not biting too hard. Basically, what I liked about the images of films like Rogue One and The Hateful Eight. Ramping the iris shows that the Litus can be used wide open with decent results. Not f1.3 wide open, but f2 wide open, which is by far the best in the test. It works well in the low light setup, and as the subject stays on the same focal plane, you can better judge how sharp it is. This combo can focus to a working distance of 45 cm. Litus offers a medium flare and a low flare version. This is supposed to be the medium flare version, but as you can see, horizontal flares are mostly absent. Not that this has to be a problem. You can build your own flare characteristics with the setup like we did in our gun test. We will talk about how to do that in scope chapter 3. Some will miss the oval bokeh, but particularly this shot shows how sexy a honeycomb bokeh can look. 